Hey, it's Michael Zapersky, and today I'm very excited to have Carl Gould joining us. Carl, welcome. Hey, how you doing, Michael? Great to be here. So, Carl, for those who aren't familiar with uh, your work, just take a moment and explain what you do. Well, I've, um, you know, I started out my career in uh, construction, had a couple of construction companies, a landscaping company, construction, real estate development, and um, sold both of those businesses and have And in 2002, launched my consulting company, which also, uh, because I've written some uh, industry standard um, methodologies, I've also spent a fair amount of time training and helping small coaches and small coaching and consulting firms launch. And um, I have uh, trained over 7,000 coaches now in, in 35 countries and have also mentored the launch of 5,000 small consultancies. Very cool. So let's take a, a step back here. You know, you mentioned that you got started in construction, landscaping. Um, how did you make that transition? Because it, it, you know, it would seem to the outsider just hearing that, that going from, you know, running construction companies and, and landscaping and then selling those businesses to all of a sudden now working within both corporate organizations as well as um, and established businesses, as well as working with coaches and so forth. Like how, how did you make that transition? What, what happened? What caused you to, to make that shift? Well, I got, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm surprised you missed that book, Michael, but it's a very natural transition from construction to coaching. It's almost like <laughs> they're, you know, it's, they're almost side by side. Well, they both start um, with C, right? Yeah, construction, well, there coaching. You go. And I think there's an O in there somewhere too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, I mean, they have nothing related to each other, but I got, I got to tell you, construction is probably one of the most complex industries you can be in. And uh, what I didn't know at the time was that it was actually very nicely preparing me for advising uh, other companies because, you know, uh, as I've learned, you know, in comparison to construction, just about every industry is pretty simple and straightforward. So Mm. I was very thankful for that early education. Um, But I really, um, I started out in, in construction only because I, I grew up in it and that's how I, that's how I got my start. And when it came time for me to begin my entrepreneurial career, uh, construction just seemed like a natural segue because I had done it. I had done it my whole life and it was, and so it was easy for me to consider that as a career. And so I, um, I, in 1986, I started my first landscaping business, uh, right out of college. And along the way, um, I sold that business and then started a construction company. But in 1990, I went to a personal development seminar by Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. I, I really fell in love with personal development and the idea of helping people, And I decided, you know, I'm not sure exactly when, but I want to do this as a full-time business in life, you know, but at the time coaching and consulting is not what it is today. You know, there were no podcasts and there was, you know, you were just, you know, a straight on one-to-one coach and, and that's, you know, that's what the industry was at the time. And, and the idea that someone was going to do this as a profession was just unheard of, you know, you didn't it was a part-time thing. It wasn't, it wasn't a full-time business at all. And, um, and so uh, nothing really prepared me for it other than my desire to want to do it and provide value and be there for people. And so, but the one thing that really did uh, get me um, moving in this direction is that the, um, I had, uh, I, I had, um, I started training other people in my methodology and that's what really, because I was early on in the game, there was um, early on in the game, there was uh, uh, the coaching industry game, I should say. Uh, there was the opportunity to train others on uh, a methodology that showed them how to make this into a real business. And that was my passion. I right. wanted to do this as a profession. I looked around and the average coach at the time made $23,000 a year. And I said, well, wait a minute. You can't do this as a profession. Hope to have a you know, hope to have a family and, you know, be making $23,000 a year. I don't care what part of the world you live in. You're not going to live on that. Um, and so I, you know, I had to find a way to make this a real profession. And so I created all sorts of manage practice management tools and, you know, uh, diagnostic tools and just created a template that people found very useful at the time. 
So and, uh, was the transition easy for you though? I mean, because you, you mentioned that you, you're coming from a background of building a construction business, a complicated business, a lot of moving parts, uh, then going into, you know, consulting and coaching, which, um, you know, many might say doesn't have as many moving parts, much, a much more simple business and process, but was it easy for you or was it a real challenge to, you know, to get those first clients and, and to build the business? Well, I, I, um, became the certified, coach for other methodologies. So getting clients in the beginning wasn't necessarily hard, but they weren't my clients. That was the key. Got you know, it. I was, I was doing coaching for others. And so as part of their methodology or part of their seminar or, you know, people who would inquire about this mm-hmm. sort of thing would then say, Hey, yeah, I'm, I'd like to learn more situational leadership. Um, and I understand you're a coach in that, you know, so, uh, then I, so getting the clients early on wasn't, hard getting my clients early on was the, was the challenge, you know, uh, because, uh, I was not a known entity at the time. So I learned other methodologies and, um, I became kind of the certified coach or the sort of, you know, somebody who knew that method enough to be, to be the coach in it. So, Got it. Become, you know, getting into coaching wasn't the tricky part, mm-hmm. um, you know, get, and getting clients, but establishing myself in my own business with my own clientele, that was more, that was the hard part. Okay. I want yeah. and then I definitely want to come back to that and explore, you know, your, your journey and approach in terms of how you've made it work uh, with great success for you. When you were making that transition though, I mean, were, what kinds of clients were, were you working with? What kinds of, of companies? So at the time, um, you know, back at that time, the coaching industry was coaching itself. Mm -hmm. It was coaches, you know, it was coaches, coaching coaches, basically. And so I did a lot of that. I did a lot of coaching of other people that wanted to start the business. And I also, um, um, and I also um, was working with some, you know, small to mid, mid size uh, entrepreneurs. Got it. And helping and helping them grow their business. So that was most of what was going on at the time. And then over time, I, I grew into doing more coaching for uh, larger businesses and then, you know, creating a model where there'd be multiple. Um, I'd be working with multiple people in the same business. So multiple coaches, mo- coaching multiple positions inside of a company. Because, you know, did it ever strike you at, in those early days, Carl, that you had just come out of, you know, two different businesses selling two companies? I don't know if they were large sales or, you know, that you just, you kind of got rid of them because you wanted to, to shift your passion and focus to coaching and consulting and so forth. But did it ever strike you or did, you know, have this thinking of, well, I've just been in landscaping construction. Could I go and apply my coaching, my consulting kind of passion and develop my skills, you know, helping other owners of, let's say, construction businesses? Well, I, I got to be honest, if I thought it, if I thought it through as much as, you know, you might suggest here, then I probably never would have done it because it was, it was not easy. Right. I mean, when I first started, I mean, you got to remember the times too, it was 15 years ago. And you told somebody you were a professional coach, they would say, Oh, wow, great. What sport? <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, it's not a sport at all. It's, uh, and you know, if I could get them to stop laughing at me long enough to explain what I did, right. then I'd be able to explain the profession, you know? So it was just a different time. You, you know, you, you weren't, um, you were either a consultant or, you know, a technical consultant of some sort, but this idea of being a coach just you know, in its form, just, I can't stress enough how much it just wasn't around back then, Got you it. know? Um, and so the, um, that was the trickiest part. I mean, I, I was so passionate about it. Um, like if you told me how much resistance I was going to be up against and how much, you know, I was going to have, how hard I was going to have to fight just for people to accept the coaching as a profession, you know, like now it's very well accepted. This is what coaches are. This is what they do. This is how they do it. And, you know, it's been well, the results have been well documented. Well, again, that just wasn't the case at the time. So um, if I could get you to understand what I do well enough, and then, and you would send, you would get a sense of what the, uh, what the upside benefits are, then cool. You know, then I, I could land you as a client, but 
If not, that was the challenge. So I, w- I was used to that in my construction business. Mm. You know, you know, the construction comp- business is a hustle. Like many small businesses, it's a hustle business. I can out hustle you and I'll get the client. And so that was, you know, that's what, that was what I did. Um, That's really where your ethic came from in your mindset that even though you were, it sounds like encountering a lot of challenges, people pretty much, you know, in many cases, not being open to even the idea of working with a coach to help them in their business and so forth. What got you through was just your, your experience and, because I think a lot of people would have been in that situation and gone like, oh yeah, I'm just, this isn't cut out for me or I'm not, a, I'm not cut out for it. Uh, or they would have found all kinds of different excuses or reasons for, uh, you know, their, their lack of progress, but you were able to, to continue through that. So do you, you know, would you say that that just came from your past experiences or was it something else that as you were building that really helped you to get through those, those tough times? No, it was just, it was just, pig headed persistence. I mean, it wasn't, right. you know, there wasn't, I, there was no like real kind of secret sauce and gosh, how did you pull this off? Um, there was, I was, you know, my passion for wanting to make this and, and I got a little bit of a taste with a couple of prospective clients about how this could work. And I, and I thought, you know, man, I can, this is something I can really make work and I want this to work badly. And so I just, what I did was, while I was considering selling my business, I kept the coaching company running. So I started the coaching company and I, and I kept the construction business going at the same time. And so I was running two businesses side by side, which was a lot. I mean, it was, that was, that was a real, that was, that was tough for those two years. Mm -hmm. But by the time I sold the construction company, I had, you know, a decent amount of clients enough to, um, and I could make a living on, not, you know, nothing great, but I could make a living on. And, um, you know, I made sure that I, I had my plate pretty full. As a matter of fact, when it came to, I was doing a fair amount of work with Tony Robbins at the time. I said to him, I, well, his company, I said, give me the international clients, give me the people in Europe and Australia, because here in New Jersey, where I live, I could be coaching somebody at three o'clock in the morning, New Jersey time but it was lunchtime in, in Europe, you know? And so I, I coached in the off hours and, you know, my, my Australian clients, I can call in the evening cause it was during the day for them. Mm-hmm. So I was, I had a construction company during the day I had and some coaching clients and I had uh, coaching clients at night, um, you know, because I, I chose internet, you know, I said, I'll take them. I'll, right. just, I'll take the international ones, you know? And they were like, wow, that's really cool. Isn't he being ambitious? And I'm thinking, well, no, it's just the only time I've got to do it. So, um, and, and it worked out really well because they didn't have people that wanted to take that clientele. So, you know, it worked out good both ways. It sound, certainly sounds like you were hustling there, Carl. And totally. Um, yeah. That's what I was the Uber of the time. The, was, <laughs> <that was Uber. laughs> you had to make, you know, you just decided you, you made a commitment to, to succeed uh, and did whatever you needed to, to make that happen. So I'm let, learning. I'm chilling. I'm yeah. earning. I'm chilling. That's the, pretty much the way it went, you know? Right. So let's explore here this transition that you made because you said at the beginning, right, your clients weren't actually your clients. They were coming from these other agencies or companies that were, were sending you uh, clients. And there's many consultants who are in that exact same place. Their clients, you know, may, they might be relying on like one main core client. Uh, and then when that disappears, right, they have to start all over again. Or they're working with some kind of agency or other consultancy who, that is feeding them their business. But they don't actually have their own clients. And obviously that erodes their margins. Uh, you know, it's, they're not really building a business. They're just, they're a consultant, but they're not a consultant, uh, a firm owner. How did you decide and how did you go about making that transition to actually starting to build your own clientele? Well, um, while we work with a lot of seasoned and experienced consultants here at Consulting Success, I'm often contacted by new early stage consultants. Invariably, the question I'm asked is, what are the steps I should take to become a successful consultant and grow my consulting business to my first six figures per year? Well, I'm excited to announce that we've opened the doors for our Momentum program. This is our most popular program for early stage consultants, and it has helped almost 1,000 consultants to start, run, and grow successful consulting businesses. 
It gives you the step-by-step -step plan to help you with your messaging, your fees, and pricing strategies, how to win more proposals, how to go to market more effectively, developing a marketing system to generate leads consistently, and so much more. And right now, until September the 19th, you can sign up for Momentum and get 50% off the regular price by going to consultingsuccess.com forward slash audio. That's consultingsuccess.com forward slash audio, A-U-D-I-O. Only 100 spots are available to join Momentum and get 50% off. This deal is only available until September the 19th or until all 100 spots are gone. We won't be opening up new spots in this program for several months. So don't wait. Go to consultingsuccess.com forward slash audio. That's consultingsuccess.com forward slash audio, A-U-D-I-O. First off, it's it's a uh, even though you're you're absolutely right. When you are a contract coach for another met model, you're you know you're a freelancer. You know um, that's it. It's a quick way to accelerate your launch, but it does have its limitations. So mm -hmm. that's you know I mean that that's sure. part of the that's part of the turf. But it, it's a it is a viable it, it is a viable model. And frankly, I'd recommend coaches do that because the I mean, I know I did it and that got me, that got me to a thousand coaching sessions delivered much quicker than any of my colleagues because they were trying to, well, let me get one client here, one client there. I had tons of clientele and client appointments in the client uh, uh, coaching sessions in the beginning. So while it didn't pay as well, it was a, it was a quick path to, you know, honing my skills and, and I, I flew past my colleagues as far as number of sessions delivered and all that. Right. So I, I like it as a strategy. I have no problem with it. Uh, even today, I, it's some, I don't need to do it anymore, so I don't. But um, I would have no problem doing it. But creating the, um, your own business, that's the, that's the trick, right? So here's the thing that I learned. And, and folks, here's what's coming in the coaching and consulting world is I, I saw the need Every time I, every time I would work with somebody, they would say, "Oh gosh, Carl, I could really use help in marketing on the business side, and I could really use help on my sales. I could really use help on my operations, and I could really use help with someone in finance." And I kept thinking, "I'm like, oh, wait a minute, why? Why am I referring out to other coaches? You know what all my clients are asking for every single time." So I said, "What if I put together?" a coaching team mm -hmm. and go into our clients with a team and just and evaluate what our core client looks for and, and provide those services in advance in a bundled package, as opposed to waiting for them to say, Oh, I need help with this. So then I go out and I look at my database and send them a referral. Why don't I just bundle it in the beginning and sell a team concept, not just the Carl concept. And that went really well. And, you know, more and more, that's where the industry is going, um, <clears throat> where, you know, it's not enough to call yourself a coach or it's not enough to just say you're, you're one type of specialized consultant. Uh, you can get projects that way, um, but you're, you're missing out on a few key fundamental things. One is you're missing out on the opportunity to gain referrals from the other professionals. So, you know, if I did my job right, like I remember, <laughs> I remember somebody um, uh, asked me if I could do a speech to a group of um, people that were looking for jobs. And they said, well, Carl, you're more entrepreneurial. What can you talk about for people looking to get hired? I said, are you kidding me? I am the, I, if I do my job right, I get fired like 300 times a year. I am the, you know, any entrepreneur is like one of the best people ever to talk about how to get hired because they have to sell themselves as soon as they're done with one project, they are unemployed mm -hmm. and they have to go out and they have to find the next job. So I said, Oh, I'm your guy. Um, because you know, if I do my job right, I'm unemployed as soon as the project is over. And that's both the upside and the downside for a project consultant, because they say because if you do your job well, um, there's, you're not likely to get a lot of repeat work. You know, people don't hire, uh, they hire some consultants again and again, but you know, for some, I mean, if you think about it, you know, my auto mechanic, if he does his job right, I should be there less and less. 
Sure. If you're, if you're an IT consultant, I should never see, you know, my computers are not supposed to go down. So if you're a project type consultant, again, nothing wrong with it. And there's plenty of, I know plenty of people who do it um, and do it well. Uh, there, the, the downside of that model is that, you know, you have to market yourself a lot more than you normally would if you had other disciplines that you could offer in your, in your program. And that's what I did. I said, wait a minute, I don't, people keep asking for this and I don't, I don't, I, I don't mind marketing and selling, but I'd rather not do it. If you gave me the choice, mm -hmm. I got into the, I got into the coaching field so I could coach, not so I could market myself about coaching. <laughs> you know? I wanted to coach people. So, so, you know, if I want to spend more of my time marketing or sorry, less of my time marketing and more time coaching, then let's create a model that is more comprehensive. And so that was my answer to that. Um, so by doing that, I think that gave me a really, uh, uh, that helped me transition into my own business. And it was a true business. It wasn't, I wasn't a, you know, single shingle warrior. I was more of a, you know, I was more of a business, not just a practice. I think it's really interesting, right? Because there's, there's a lot of truth to this for, for many consultants, you know, going in, you do one project. Um, and in many cases, then the project is over. Of course, you can find ways to, and set up a model where you can do ongoing, you know, optimization and support and service and additional coaching. And there's always ways to, you know, to potentially add more value for, for a client, but you're right for, you know, a solo consultant or a small consulting firm, certainly their, their skills in marketing and promoting themselves and getting out there, they always want to be generating more leads. The model that you're talking about that, you know, that you've embraced and has worked really well for you uh, is all about kind of building a company with a group of other consultants in different disciplines so that you can serve your clients in many different areas, obviously generate a lot more revenue um, as you're adding more value in those different disciplines for that one client. But I think the hesitation that a lot of consultants have, uh, Carl, to this is that it's, there's management that involved, right? You have to manage other people. You have to, you know, worry about them, uh, performing. And I think a lot of consultants actually move out of the corporate space because they want fewer spinning wheels, not, not more. What has your experience been in terms of working with a group of other consultants uh, and still managing them unless you really enjoy the act of, of managing? How, how have you set up systems and what just, what is your approach to making this all work without a lot of headaches? Yeah. So that you, you mentioned that that's a big thing. And that's why I mentioned earlier, you know, if you are the certified consultant in another, in another model, you miss, you miss all of the administrative and, and organizational development and management headaches that come with it. So there's that upside, but if you want to, if you want to build a business, um, then you need people that are in line with your, mission, vision, values, and purpose. Mm -hmm. You need people that believe in, in two things, mostly. Uh, they have to obviously be certified in what you do, the, the method of delivery, right? And they have to, they, at the end of the day, if I'm a coaching company, I need people who want to be coaches. And, and when they're done at the end of the day, they're tired because they gave it all, but they're energized because they got to do what they love all day long. And so, so the what has to be there. No, there's no question about that. But more importantly, how you do what you do and why you do what you do. You need to have people who are in alignment with that, you know? Um, so, you know, in our firm, we use, we, we recommend out subcontracted coaches to do the work. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, but you have to really understand our model because we, we do a lot of outside the box advising and, we, we give the kind of advice that not a lot of other advisors would really have the guts to make. So you've got to have people who are, you know, who are, who understand that, who bought into that methodology and say, yeah, this is a good path. I see it as a, I see it as a successful path for the client and we, I want to go in that direction. You right. know, so um, what I'm really hearing you say, Carl, is that for, if, if a consultant wants to build a firm where there's going to be other, you know, a group of consultants or other advisors or associates. The key is developing the right culture, making sure that everyone that comes on board is bought in and really embraces not only the culture, but also the vision, the values, 
the methodology. And if you get that part right, then there's a lot fewer headaches uh, than there would be if you're bringing in people who are not the right people. Is that right? right. Yeah, exactly. You want, you're bringing in people that naturally every single day want to do this work and want to do it the way, the way we're doing it, the how and the why they mm. believe in why we're doing it. They believe in how we're doing it. And you know, so if you think about it, if you're, if you um, wanted to go on a long run one day and you put a little note out that says, Hey, I want to do some long distance running, but I don't feel like doing it by myself. I want to, uh, I was, um, you know, hoping I could go with people that are runners. Right. And so you put that out and you do a meetup group or an evite or, or just a little, you know, neighborhood, you know, blog. And you say, Hey, meet me in front of the ABC bank and we're going to go for a 10 mile run. Right. And we'll guess. So people that don't like running aren't going to show up for this. Sure. You know, and people that only will run a mile aren't going to show up either. And you're going to, sh- the people that are going to show up are the people that like to run or willing to run 10 miles. And so you're not going to have to, talk them into all the reasons why running 10 miles is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're going to be, they're going to be there willingly passionate. You know, they might not be having a great day and running 10 miles might be hard for them that day, but they are going to, um, you know, they're going to do it by choice because that's part of what you're proposing is part of their, um, is part of their plan. It's part of their DNA and it's part of what they've said that they want to do and be. So, Um, the key is, you know, how the key is, is, you know, getting it up front, you know, like in real estate, we say, you don't make money when you sell real estate, you make money when you buy real estate, right? Right. You made the right deal in the beginning for the right price. And all, you know, everyone agreed kind of the same thing in business. You don't, you you make your, your employees are successful, um, really on the day you hire them, not just the day that you you know, the days that they're getting trained and everything else. It's how you buy is critical. So where, for someone listening to this going, you know, I love this idea. I want to, you know, I want to add additional uh, associates consultants to my own business. Like I want to build the bench uh, because that is certainly something that many consultants will want to do at some point in their business. What tips can you offer for finding those superstars, for finding those, the people that are going to have, the right cultural fit and, you know, shared values and so forth. What, where should people think about looking to find uh, those people? Well, depending on the type of business operations, if you're a locally, if you are a locally um, uh, located business and you operate locally, then I, there's still, you know, local people buy locally and like to work locally. I would still, um, I would take, I would still take ads out in the traditional places, you know, the newspaper. What? Yes. I said it, the newspaper and cause they all have online classifieds, but you know, the, uh, the, the local paper Craigslist, you know, there are lo- local people who like to buy locally through local means. And mm-hmm. So I would put those in. If you are, um, if you're a virtual company, but there are organiz, you know, there are virtual organizations, like I belong to some CEO, uh, international CEO groups and, you know, I would, and they all have an intranet of some sort and they all have a database or a directory or organizational trade magazines. Then if you're looking for somebody with a specific set of skills, I would go in that direction. So um, I, I would look in the areas where they are, where, where their buying preferences are probably the highest, you know, I want to buy local. So I'm going to, I'm going to market local. I want to be part of this virtual organization or, or, you know, part of this uh, think tank or part of this group of subject matter experts. So let's find out where they, well, let's find out where they interact and, and we can put advertisements there. So I would go in the places where there's already a predisposition to that, to their, um, you know, where they might be located and where they might be, uh, uh, you know, where, where they're located and where they already interact because they're likely to want to get even more involved. Makes sense. And with these people that you, that you bring on, are you ever bringing on people that help you to actually do your own business development and marketing for your firm? Or is that done kind of more, call it in-house, you know, by you or, or other key team members? Uh, we, we do it using um, outside contractors um, and sales reps and affiliates. So um, I, I, you know, 
I've long held the view that how you pay somebody doesn't matter. Meaning, I mean, legally it matters. Of course, you have to make sure you're following all the right laws and all that. So, sure. and that's easy enough. All the laws are written uh, very, very clearly. So there's no problem there. But you just, what you do is you, um, you know, whether somebody is paid as a subcontractor or, a, you know, a W-2 employee here in the States or they're, you know, a strategic alliance partner or an affiliate, how they get paid isn't, you know, not to me, that's not that big a deal. It's just how much are you making them feel a part of your organization? Mm -hmm. So they want to advance your business plan. So their business plan, you know, as part of their business plan is to advance your business plan. That's when you know you've got a good partner there. So, um, but just making sure that they understand what you're trying to accomplish and it's, it's well spelt out what the, what you're expecting of them. Then, um, I think, um, you know, how you, um, brought them onto your team is, is much less important, much right. less important. And on the topic of marketing, what, what's working best for your company right now to attract those established, you know, call them corporate or larger organizations? What, what method, what approach is most effective for you right now? Well, what's most effective for me is speaking and, um, uh, you know, speaking to groups and also um, advertising and marketing our services at industry trade organizations. Um, the larger the company that the CEO or the manager runs, the more likely they are to stick in, within their trade organizations or mm -hmm. in smaller mastermind groups. That's where they tend to do their networking. So for us, that's, that's works for us. So I, you know, I'll, I, I'll be the breakout or keynote speaker at an industry trade event or go speak to small mastermind groups um, or small forum or, uh, you know, peer to peer advisory board groups. Uh, that'll be, that'll be where I tend to uh, market myself. And that, and that seems to be effective. Love it. So you're very targeted. You're not just going to speak to a general group of entrepreneurs. If you're targeting a specific industry or you have some set criteria for who your ideal client is, you're going to the specific trade event where you know your ideal clients are, are going to be. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I want, um, now I do, I will give presentations to larger groups um, as long as I know that there is a, um, a, a segment of that group that is the target audience, then I'm happy to do that. Right. Um, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Well, listen, Carl, I really appreciate, I mean, there's so much more that we could, we could be going into here. Um, but I want to thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing a bit of your journey and um, what you're up to right now. I want to make sure that everyone that is listening, that will be checking out the show notes and transcript afterwards, uh, can learn more about you and the work that you do. What's the best place for people to go to connect and learn more about uh, all of your work? So uh, carlgould.com is a great place to uh, is great place to see what I'm doing, and um, and the uh, one of the things that we like to offer to uh, any of your listeners is something we call the free business. Well, it's free now. Uh, free business analysis. Um, when you go to the site, just under contact you know, type in free business analysis and it's a two hour con up to two hour consultation where we'll walk you through a specific process and, and offer you five growth strategies for your business. So if you'd like to take us up on it, go to carlgool.com or seven stage advisors.com and uh, contact us there either spot. And then we'll, uh, we'll hook up and, um, you know, provide, um, uh, provide you some value in your business and hopefully help you grow to the next level. Awesome. Thanks again, Carl. Been a lot of fun. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Michael. I really appreciate it and appreciate the opportunity.